Hello everyone, today I'm going to show you how to replace pads and rotors on a BMW X5 E70 on the front of the vehicle. I just wanted to say thank you to all my subscribers and those, have it, those who have sent me questions on my website bmwdiy.com. So far I've had some great questions and I appreciate it for those of you that have sent me a tip after I've been able to help you fix your BMW. The first thing I'm going to go over is how to set this up and you do want to use a hydraulic jack with the jack stand for safety. Now I like to set it up on both sides. On a BMW you do have a location where there's like a lift pad. You can see the lift pad down on the back side over here from underneath. That's where I'm at in the front. right here here and that's the location that you want to lift it up and the jack stands just for safety I like to lift up both wheels on the front that way I can actually turn the wheel to access the caliper better now it's a good idea to make sure you secure the vehicle I just have a rock back here behind the back tire and it's good to actually activate the emergency brake to prevent the vehicle from rolling Brakes aside, the first thing I want to go over is to make sure that the fluid level is correct in the reservoir or rather not too high. On an X5, there's this panel that needs to be removed to actually take a good look at the reservoir on the driver's side. And you need a 13 millimeter and there's these little plastic 13 millimeter screws that just do a 90 degree twist to unlock. Now you're going to have one here, one there on there and one in the center and then this panel is going to come right out and it slides up the front lifts out here all right just put that aside and here's our reservoir so here's our max fill line here when you compress the piston this fluid has to go somewhere so you want to make sure that you're not going to overflow the reservoir. If you overflow the reservoir, then it makes a mess and you don't want to get any brake fluid on any painted surfaces because brake fluid will eat paint. Also when you're done the repair on the vehicle for brakes, be it front or rear, then you want to make sure that this level is correct. And you would do that just by removing or adding some brake fluid. Alright, about ready to get started on the brakes themselves. I'm going to have some good tips for you on uh, how to compress the piston as we take this apart. There's two sensors, one on the driver's side and one on the right rear. So we're only going to do the fronts today. So we only have to worry about replacement of one sensor in the front. Alright, we're going to get these lugs off. It's a 17 millimeter. I already have some of them off on this side, so I'm just going to take the remaining two off. Sometimes the wheels will stick, so you may have to bang the inner portion. So if you have to turn it, this one can it off. So if you turn the wheel and you hit the side of the tire with a, a good mallet, you can usually break it free. Next, I'm going to take off the disc to hub screw, which is right here. I'm going to take a screwdriver and put it in the fins so that prevents the rotor from turning. And I'm just going to take my, I believe this was a 6mm hex or allen and take out the set screw. It's always a good idea to put a little bit of anti-seize on the set screw. Just put a little bit on the threads. Just get this here, there's too much on it. It's just a good idea to put a little bit on when you go back on. It's gonna make it easier when you come apart again. All right, well, let's take a good look at these pads. Sometimes it's hard to tell if you need brakes just by looking at the outer pad. If you look at this one here, there's actually about five millimeters left on the outer pad. So let's take a look at the inner pad now. 
Now three millimeters is discard level. So if we look at the inner, you can actually see that the sensor is worn through. So the inner actually wore a little bit faster than the outer, which is not uncommon. When we lubricate everything, that should help everything slide better to hopefully get a full life out of the next set of brakes. Now this particular caliper has a double piston. I like to take a screwdriver and just put it in the inner pad and pry towards yourself. And do that on the top and on the bottom. And you're actually going to work the pad back to pre-compress the piston in the caliper. All right, and do the same thing down here. There it goes. And once it's actually pushed back, if you go in the center, you can just use the pad itself. And I can pretty much compress these, this piston almost all the way. And I can do it uniform using the old pad. So I'm just going to do that right in the center. Take a look here. Press a little bit on each side from top to bottom, top and bottom. And actually that's pretty much all the way seated. I might not have to compress that anymore. Now it's a good time to check that fluid to make sure it's not going to overflow. All right, my fluid level is still correct, so I'm good here. Now if I did this side and switch to the other side right away, my fluid level might be too high. So when I'm done one side, I could press the brake pedal a few times and have that caliper then, the piston will fill up with fluid, compress to a certain amount, and use up a little bit of that fluid. But we, it's a good idea to keep an eye on it as you're doing both sets. All right, next step is the spring retainer. So you just have to pry on the spring retainer against the caliper, pry it back to relieve the pressure. And if you give it a little bit of a wiggle, you can actually pop that free. Pretty much the same thing on both sides here. Oh, my caliper's already loose too, which is smells nice. Try to wiggle this side free too here. Everything's falling right off for me. This is nice. Well, that bottom side's giving me a little trouble, but if you just pull it forward and twist a little bit, that retainer clip comes off. Now this goes on the same way. We're going to just push it back like this and relock it onto those two holes here and here on the caliper itself. So once that's off, put that aside. Now if there's any kind of question where this spring retainer is not holding correct tension, you should replace it. Let's take a quick look at the sensor routing. There's a sensor there. It's going to come back this way. And there's a clip on the back side here on the caliper, a plastic clip. Then it's going to come up. And this is it right here. Coming back this way. And then it goes to another holder bracket here. And it goes on the back side through here comes back around to another bracket holder here and then up to this little black box up here which has some clips on it here and here and that opens up one is for the sensor which I believe is this one on the left which this just pops out and one is for the wheel speed sensor alright I'm gonna just rip this sensor off here and just take it off of the plastic clip from behind here where it's being secured. And just put that out of the way for now. Now for the slide bolts, I'm not going to take those off this time because this is an odd size. It's a 9mm which doesn't come as a normal kit. So I'm actually going to take the whole caliper bracket off and install the, the brake pads into the entire caliper bracket with the whole assembly removed. Now this style X5 is going to use an E18 which is this E-Torx and E18 for the caliper bracket. 
So you need some good leverage, so you need a nice long half inch to break these free. So I'm going to go ahead and take both of these off. Now these bolts show as a one-time use bolt. It's not because they're a stretch bolt, but because they end up having a micro-encapsulated end with some Loctite on it. So I'm actually going to apply a little bit of blue Loctite, which is medium strength, just to the threads when I reinstall and, tight and torque those down. So if I take my caliper bracket off, I can flip it over the top like this. And this is how I'm going to replace the pads. So for this, I'm just going to, you can see the pad slides in just like this. I'm going to slide the pad right out here. That's the outer. And same thing on the inner. Go ahead and slide that one off the same way. Now if you're just doing, some rust in here. If you're just doing pads, you can still do it this way, especially if you don't have that 9mm hex for the caliper slide bolts, which is very difficult to find. You can find it online though, but I don't have one handy, so this is how I'm going to do this today. Alright, so instead of it taking it apart that way, you can also now slide this out, like so, from the guides. and. Now our whole bracket is separated so I can go ahead and clean this. So this is actually maybe a better way to do that. You don't even have to touch these at all. The guide bolts, we'll just leave those tightened up. And uh, inside here is that odd size. Now you want to take a brush and clean the slider contacts. We're also going to add a little bit of contact. BMW brake paste at these locations here as well. Yeah, break dust. So clean those locations good. I'm going to take a small piece of Scotch-Brite and just gently go over these slider portions right here and clean them up and just get any of that rock and road salt and debris dirt build up out of here and you put these back on dry all right i have my bmw brake paste 83 12 2 296 187 is the part number i'm just going to use a little acid brush and i'm going to paint the backing plate this is going to help prevent some noises from breaking oscillation vibrations which create that brake squeak. This is going to help absorb that. I'm going to put it on the other side as well. And I like to also put it onto the slider contacts on the pad. You don't want to get any on the pad meat material itself, just on these contact points. And on the caliper bracket, I'm going to hit all of the spots that that pad rests on as well and just paint a little bit of this brake paste on those locations as well. Both sides, I need a little bit more brake paste here. And here's the bottom. Alright, now that's ready for installation. And just make sure both my pistons are all the way back, which actually they don't need any to be moved at all. You can use that just with a pair of adjustable pliers. And then go ahead and reinstall my bracket here. Look at the rust on these from the rock salt. It's just basically disintegrating where that is held in to the piston. 
There's a lot of rust buildup here on this caliper as well, which these new springs are real difficult. They don't want to actually push in. So I'm going to need to do some force to try to get these to push into these caliper brackets here. All right, because of the rust buildup, they don't really want to clip in here. I'm going to take this piece back off. I'm going to try to do this a little bit different here. Okay, I'm going to take my pad and push it on first and make sure that that's clipped on. Then I'm going to take my slider and put that on second and you can line it up so that it should slide past the brake pad itself. Just gotta work it side to side. There we go. There we go. And now that totally is back and it's in the slider's on the side where it needs to be. Alright, outer pad, I'm going to do the same thing. This one should be easier. So now I'm pretty much ready to put the caliper on. Or, sorry, do the rotor. Now this rotor came off nice and easy, and these things are heavy. I'm going to want to sand, not sand this down, but just use a brush again. And just go over the hub remove any kind of debris that's on there and put my new rotor on. I just have the caliper sitting right up top here. Okay, I'm just take my rotor, line up my set screw hole. Take your set screw first. Just going to slide that down. That set screw is 16 newton meters. Which you can do without even having anything installed. It's that little. I'm going to take my E18 bolts and apply a little bit of blue Loctite, medium Loctite. The container is red but it has a blue stripe for medium. And I'm going to just take my caliper now and put it into place. Then you can take your E18s and just move everything around to get them started. Alright, those E18s are started. Just have to snug those up now, top and bottom. I'm going to go ahead and tighten those up. Now those go to 110 newton meters. Okay, now we're almost done here. We got the spring retainer, which if you place on 
where it goes about, it floats a little bit above those circles right here and here. I'm just going to place it, push it back, and everything goes right and lined up, lines up correctly. You can just clip this right on. One, two. And I always like to give it a tap so that spring retainer doesn't come off. All right, and then the final step is going to be to route the sensor for the driver's side. Obviously, the passenger side is going to be the same procedure, and you, but you just don't have to worry about the sensor. So a nice way to do the sensor is to just start from the back where this is just a press tab right here. I'm going to press the tab. It's not too much dirt and everything. And it releases for me here. Jeez. Of course, it's not going to want to, which is fine. You just need to lift up gently on that retaining clip. Maybe with a pick. Just going to clean out the dirt from the back side of the connector and try to push on it. There we go. With a screwdriver, you can see that it's actually lifting up and it came right off. So there's just some dirt in there. So we can take our new sensor and see this has like a spring retainer right on the end, right here. Put that on and then follow it. Here's our first holder. Which is a press fit into this metal bracket. Right back here. The sensor sits in here and there's a little slider. So we'll just close that up, make sure that's locked. Follow this down to that bracket, and there's a groove that it sits into. You have a little bit of lube on there, it might help. Let's see if I get this on. There we go. You follow it down, it goes behind. To another bracket, which is located over back here. You know, unfortunately it's hard to see. All right, if you get your head in there, here's that other bracket coming up this way. So we gotta pop it off of there and then put the new holder in at that location. If you do this one at a time, you really can't mix it up. The next one is coming up this way and it's right here on the top. Push that into its holder now. Okay. And then we come over the top and we're going down towards the actual brakes. So then it runs down this way and there's that plastic holder. It just pushes right into this holder. And then this piece comes around and there's a little nub end and that goes into the little hole right here. And then that just pushes in and locks into place. You just have to make sure that none of these locations, it sticks out anywhere where it's going to touch the wheel. And at this point, it's time to put the wheel on. Set your wheel in place. And you never want to zip these on with electric or air without first getting the thread started on all of the lugs. These are actually some finer threads. And it's actually pretty easy to cross thread these. You know, if everything feels good, then you can go ahead and switch to either air or electric. Let's do a quick snug. And when we're all done, I'm going to torque these down. But I'm going to go ahead and do the other side. Final step, of course, is to torque the wheels down. For this vehicle, it's 140 Newton meters. 
torque them down in a star pattern. We need to check our brake fluid level and reset the service light. Alright, I made sure to pump the brakes and then double check that you're at the correct level, which I'm right at the top. So I'm good to go there. I can go ahead and put that cover back on. It just really falls into place. With that in place, then you just need to twist your 13 millimeter plastic screws here to lock that into place. And then we've got to reset that brake light. Resetting the brake light, let's key it on. Start stop button on, service light comes on because the brakes were due. And I press and hold the left cluster button. Wait for all these warnings to go off. There's our brake warning. And I press and hold again, it's going to say reset. Oh, I waited too long. Let go, press and hold, it'll say reset. Let go, press and hold again. And if you did everything right, it should reset to 31,000 miles. And after that, take it for a drive. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found that this video was helpful. Likes are appreciated. Thank you.